Welcome. This week, our overview lessons are 57 to 60. How was the assessments from the previous week? How did your children do? How did you guys do? This week is interesting because we're going to be learning odds and evens and halves and doubles, which leads us into one lesson on multiplication. Yeah. In kindergarten or level A. Can you believe it? Wow. Anyway, it's going to be fun. So let's see what we're going to need for this week and we'll get started. This week you're going to need your abacus, your worksheet, the piles, the math balance, the dry erase board, the place value cards, tally sticks, and your math card game book. Lesson 57, more about evens and odds. So we're going to use the abacus. We're going to ask the child to build the stairs on the abacus. So we'll do the one, two. I'm just going to go halfway just to give you an idea of what we're doing. Then you're going to ask your child, well, what happens when you add one to one of the rows? Now, because I, I only went to five, I'm not going to add it to five because that's not going to work. But let's just say we add it here. What do you notice? Well, it looks just like the row below it. Hmm. I wonder if that will happen every time. Maybe you should try it. And then let your child explore and see what they find. Most of these activities on here are pretty self-explanatory. You can look at the lesson, you can look at the pictures, and it, I mean, I don't know that I need to show you really anything. I will show you the very end, but just note, you know, that your child's going to use tiles to build the even numbers, just like they see on their dot cards. They're going to also enter it onto the abacus. And then they'll, on the second page, you'll see they're gonna work with the odd numbers, but they're also gonna see what happens when you add one to an odd number. Now towards the end, it has them counting by twos. And so all they're gonna do is they're gonna, you're gonna enter, they're gonna count two, four, six, eight, Ten, ten two, ten four, and then you just let them count until they get tired of counting. There's not a specific number they need to go to. On the last one, you're asking your child is 37 an even number. Some children may know right away. That's fine. But if they don't, have them show you on the abacus. Now, here's our 37. But what they're going to do is they can do this to separate them by twos, because right, they know that two is an even number. And they can see that it's not because there's just one here. It doesn't have a partner. It is an odd number. Lesson 58, more doubling and having. So you start off by giving your child worksheet 14, which is practice writing numbers. They're gonna be working on their numbers five and six. So this lesson calls for the balance. I'm not going to pull the balance out to show. I think you guys have a good idea of how this works. You can see the pictures. We're going to put two of the weights on one. And then the child is going to take a weight on the other side of the balance and lay it on a number to get it to, to balance. And then they'll write their equation. So they're going to they're going to write their equation two different ways. On the marker board, they're going to use tally marks. Then in their math journal, they're going to write the numbers or the numerals. Of course, you know, depending on how your child does with the numbers, if they're still struggling with their writing, you can write it for them. 
Uh, you may even want to pull out the place value cards so they can point to the number and then you can write it for them. Or by seeing the number, maybe that will help them to write the number. So for doubling six through nine, you're going to use two eights, you know, on six and two eights on seven and two eights on eight. But on the other side, you're going to use a weight on the 10 and then the child will need to figure out what the other number is. And then once they figure it out, have them build it with the place value cards first. So for example, six plus six is 12 or 10, two, one, 10, two. So they're gonna find the 10 place value card and the two place value card, put them together. Then they're going to write on the marker board in tally sticks what the equation is. Then they're going to go to their math journal and write it with the numbers. So the last half of this lesson is having. And you're gonna start with the number 10. Have your child get 10 tiles in a group and then you're gonna ask them to divide it into two groups. I would give it a second to see how they plan on doing that. Now here's the thing, you wanna discourage them from counting. So you don't want them to say one, one, you know, two, two. So what you could do is suggest that they take two tiles and put them in one group and two tiles in another group until they get it divided. Now, of course, when you're doing 10, you'll have two groups and then two groups, and then you're gonna be left with only two tiles. So then they're gonna have to take one and put it in one group and one and put it in the other group. Then they're gonna see how many tiles is half of 10. Then they're going to write the equation for this. But this time, they don't start off with five plus five equals 10. They're gonna start off with 10 because they started off with a group of 10. Then they divided it and they saw that it was into two groups of five. So it'll say, they'll write 10 equals five plus five. Then go ahead and put all those tiles back together. And now we're gonna add two more tiles which will make 12 and they'll do the same thing. Then we add two more tiles for 14 and then two more for 16 and then two more for 18. And what they're doing with the tiles is very similar to what they were doing on the balance. It's just giving them another way of seeing it. Just another tool to help them understand. So there's a lot of work in this lesson, lots of different things they'll be doing. Again, you know, we have the five days of the week. We have one day that's free. This might be one of those lessons that you may want to split into two days if you need to. Now, the beauty of this lesson is your child is actually multiplying and dividing, but has no idea that's what they're doing. I love how Right Start does this. I love how they sneak it in. I call it sneaking it in. But they're not using the big terms. Sometimes you hear the word multiplication, we freak out, just like some of you are probably freaking out at the thought that you actually have a lesson devoted to multiplication. But look, you just did it in this lesson. Lesson 59, Introducing Multiplication. So we start off by asking the child to enter six on the abacus three times. And so we let them know this is six taken three times, which if you write it out, it would be six times three. And then ask them, how much is it? Now, let your child try to figure it out before you tell them. They might be able to look at this and see the five, 10, 15, and then three more for 18. They may have to, have to do the give and take. Now remember how that is. If we're gonna take two, we're gonna move two. I'm gonna take two more. Use the last two. And now I can see that it is one, ten, eight. You're also gonna use the balance, another tool for helping with understanding. It's pretty self-explanatory. You could see it on the, the top of the second page. And so then it's asking nine times three. I just love that we're not starting off with these real easy, basic 
multiplications, we're just going for it. But look at the note in the explanations. Dr. Cotter introduced five-year-olds to multiplication and they wanted hard ones. And so why not? We have tools, they can figure it out. We're just introducing multiplication right now. It's just one of these quick, brief, boop, here we go, we're introducing multiplication. But in Right Start, we don't really focus on multiplication till we get into level D. We're gonna do a little bit in B, a little bit in C, but then D is the big focus. So again, nine, three times. So we're gonna enter nine, three times, and now we could do the give and take. Again, your child could figure it out by looking at the fives. That's a lot. That's a lot to um, try to figure out, especially at this age. So this is where the give and take really comes in handy. So let's just say we're gonna do that and we'll do this. And what do we have? Two, 10, seven. That's a pretty easy give and take. So on the bottom where it talks about reading an array and it has you enter five, seven times. All right, this is called an array. And all an array is, is an arrangement, as it says in here, I'm just gonna read it. An array is an arrangement of quantities in rows and columns. Here we have our rows, then we have our column. Well, it's kind of cool. I can't really do that as well with this, but if I turned it on its side, here we have five taken seven times, but on its side, it would be seven taken five times. So it's kind of cool that you can see that on the abacus both ways. Of course, we're not gonna do that with the children right now, but we're gonna ask them to make other arrays and then try to figure out what the answer is. So just give them the abacus, let them try some of their own. Some of them may want to do the whole thing. Well, that's great. We have 10 times 10. How much is that? Well, maybe they know they don't have to do anything else. They know there's a hundred beads on here. So let them have some fun in making their own arrays. That's one of those activities that you don't have to be around for. You can have them make the array. Then they can find their answer, then they can come back to you and then you can let them know if they got it correct or not. Last lesson for this week, lesson 60, adding and writing doubles equations. So for these activities, it's wanting you to make a part whole circle on their dry erase board. But remember, if you have this available, go ahead and use it. If not, if you just wanna write it on the dry erase board, do that also. So we're gonna do a few story problems. And on this one, we're asking child how many wheels are on a car? There's four. Well, how many would be on two cars? So whatever our, our parts, how many wheels are on one car? That's one of our parts. How many wheels would be on two cars? Well, I don't know yet, but I do know that if you have two cars, both of them would have four wheels. And then let them use whatever tool they need to figure out what four plus four is. They might want to use their abacus. They may want to use their balance. They may even want to grab some tiles. I don't know. Once they do, they can write their answer. And then we ask them to write the equation. So they would write out four plus four equals eight. You end this lesson with a game. It's the Can You Find game. It's N43 in the math card game book. Now there's a little bit of a variation here. This is where the children are gonna use their place value cards for the tens. So they're gonna get all those out, lay them out in front of them. But instead of you telling them verbally what to look for, you're going to enter that amount on the abacus and then they will find the right place value card that goes with it. In conclusion, it's a fun little activity where the child has to figure out how many toes they have on both feet. We're done. We did it. Another week under your belt. This should be a fun week, doing the doubling and doing the halving and 
a little bit more multiplication. So in doing the doubling, I know in the book it talks about using tiles, and we've talked about this before, sometimes bringing in something fun like M&Ms or Skittles can be fun to do, or maybe Legos or some other items that your child likes that you have around the house and you have enough quantity to be able to separate them. Maybe they have enough stuffed animals. They can use their stuffed animals. I don't know. You can let your child choose what they want to use. It doesn't have to be the tiles. Just have fun. I know I say that a lot, but really, especially level A, have fun. <laughs> if you have any questions, you have any concerns, maybe you don't feel your child is advancing as well as you think they should, don't hesitate to call or to contact us. We would love to walk beside you and help you. You can reach us at the information you see on the screen. You can also contact me personally at Debbie at rightstartmath.com. Join me next week as we go over lessons 61 to 64. Until then.